Great to have you with us. Now, the Ghana Union of Traders Association is protesting the latest increases in port charges. The association says in a statement that the cost of doing business is becoming increasingly unbearable. They are therefore not in the position to entertain additional costs which they can't ascertain. So what exactly do they want done about the issue at hand? To answer that is Dr. Joseph Obeng, who is national president of Guta. Good afternoon, sir. Thanks Good for joining afternoon. us. Mm -hmm. So um, what has changed in your transactions at the ports? Yeah, nothing has really changed. It's only that the cost of doing business keep on going. At the last count, we have um, about 19 different levies and taxes mm. that is being imposed on single import that we made. 19 of them, and they keep coming. The rest are Now, what has even increased or doubled the duty payment is the common external tariff that has been um, introduced. For instance, electrical, electrical product that used to be 10%, now is 20%, so duty has doubled. Um, tomatoes, tin tomatoes and biscuits and other things that used to be around 15 to 20% have gone to 35%. Mm. What it means is that if you pay 20%, um, as um, your duty, mm -hmm. then 17 and half percent of um, VAT is slapped on it. Mm -hmm. Cumulatively, it's about 40 percent mm -hmm. because they slap the 20 percent on your um, cost before they slap the 17 and a half. So, cumulatively, 40 percent. Then, the additional 19 or so that I'm talking about is slapped on it. So, um, you have to find 50 plus percent of your importing capital. So if you used 100,000 to import your goods, it means that you have to go and find about $55,000 to go and pay for these levies and taxes. Mm. And it's too much, it's so outrageous. Mm. And that um, we think something needs to be done. Otherwise, um, the uh, great majority of this will just opt out. And uh, only yesterday, um, the electrical dealers wanted even to stop clearing their goods. Because um, goods that we, they were paying around um, 60,000 to 90, between 60 and 90,000, depending on the quantum of goods okay. in the container, have now gone to about 300,000. So you're talking about an increase in yeah. the port charges. Since yeah. when did you notice this increase? Yeah, uh, these uh, this have been there. Okay. But for instance, um, AU, Levy will come, and then we add it. Okay. And then now, if you've heard of fumigation, mm. um, Levy mm. is also coming on board. So mm. when is going to be the cutoff point? Okay. So you've said that you will opt out. Some people are saying they won't clear their goods anymore. What does yeah, that mean? Yeah, because they can't simply clear. If you look at the cost customs, you, um, we have what is trans transactional value. Mm. That's what first and foremost... Uh, casting use. Mm. If casting have any doubt, they have to use the permutation value. The permutation value means that they have to go to the market to see in um, reality how much the, the product is being sold. The, if these things are not taken to con uh, consideration and then somebody uses um, his discretion to give an atrocious value that go and pay this, you bring the product you can't sell and you'll be at a loss. And so people then think that what, from what they, are, they were telling us, they are they saying that uh, um, if the government um, want to buy um, importation outright, if it is so, then it should be bought and tell us that we don't want you to bring certain products and all that. Okay. But if uh, 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 the way we are going, uh, I mean, uh, importation has become punitive rather than, but we are 
um, supporting the economy immensely. We employ more than the manufacturing sectors. If you let's put the figures down, mm. we employ more. Most of our people who do not have the the work from the mainstream civil servant uh, work and then maybe the banks and all that find themselves and they are in the great majority right uh, so what is guta asking of government so we, we are telling government to defer the cet values uh, that's all we, uh, if we uh, we defer the cet the introduction of the cet then we would have gone back so you see that from last year people have been complaining duties are going up right. and sometimes when you do that they say that it's because they, now they are putting some measures in place and it's exposing that that's not true. The truth of the matter is that duties have actually been increased because of the CET. When the, and the by common CET, you mean the common external, common external tariff? tariff. Uh, so we, that we, the ECOWAS, ECOWAS tariff. We, we so are, what would deferring it mean? Uh, defer means that now your people can clear. Your people, because it is for the ECOWAS sub-region, and we know, our investigation know that not all the countries have slapped on their citizenry. So why should it be as? It's something that is coming for the sub-region, and Ghana can put up an argument, and then, well, um, it has a, a serious crisis at hand. And now, uh, for what is going on, uh, the importation is in crisis. People, so many people have started saying, we can't clear, we can't clear, and it's not a joke. Mm. And if care is not taken, your very economy will come down, the fundamentals of your economy. Don't, don't, don't forget that importation is helping the economy is, is itself. So uh, help me to understand yeah. this. If this common external tariff is not deferred, yeah. Guta will not clear their goods. Uh, no, it's a natural sequence. Mm. People might not be in a position to clear their goods, mm. and naturally they will stop working and then um, uh, people's businesses are collapsing. Okay. It's a natural can Guta per se is not going to tell anybody to stop importation. But if the circumstances are such that you cannot operate, so it means that the system has collapsed um, um, the businesses. That's what we are saying. The government, right. I know, had good intentions for the importing community, mm. and that's why we are calling on government to sit down with stakeholders so that we know we put the proper benchmarks and all that mm. so that um, government can have its width. Okay. But you know, um, sometimes they think that when they slap the bigger um, duties, they are doing themselves uh, good. No. When they do that, they are trying to um, um, uh, uh, push people into criminal things like uh, smuggling and all that. And then when people also stop importation too, then you see the great number of us are not important. Then customs are not also getting their targets. But if you okay. make it user friendly, the, uh, we can comply. The compliance level is high. And the citizenry will have their work because the, the goods will be cheaper for them. People then can also go and freely declare their values, the real values, and all that. Business will boom. So I will also forget, I will hmm. forget that in all these things, we are being opted out of the West African business. We have about 350 markets in the, this uh, West African sub-region. And only Ghana is up, losing out. You hear our mother saying we are going to Togo to buy goods. They say they are going to Benin to buy goods. They go to Nigeria to buy goods because of these cost differences. Mm. And so we are uh, being opted out. If business is booming, otherwise these people are also bringing in the hard currencies. Because when we go, we change the currencies to these um, destinations. And now if we, we, we have structured the economy so that it is also attractive for all these sub-regions to come here, they will bring in the uh, limited resources right. rather than us taking it. So if you look at it in a comprehensive manner, and then they will not skew the amount only towards um, increasing the duty. Uh, this, this, this is not, uh, it's not good. If you do all okay. the cost-benefit analysis, it's not helping everybody, including the government himself. Mm. So we have to sit down. Right. So um, have you engaged government? And what have they been saying? We, we've done it so many times. And uh, to tell the truth, we've been doing this with the um, Ghana Revenue um, Authority, the Commissioner General himself. Some of these things they also understand. We talk with the customs and all that. But you know that they are uh, implementers. And then uh, much as the, the are good, uh, good intentions are, unless the, um, the policy makers 
um, the ministry and, have, and uh, uh, yes, and that's why because they are going to take the decision that um, we are deferring the CET because the, it, it's the pain. The so CET, have you engaged the government? We've I talked. Mean, the we've talked before. And now we are also uh, going to go to them again because now the complaints are getting many people wanting to even um, uh, uh, hit the streets and demonstrate and all that. But we told them yesterday we have to convey all the electrical delays and send them to customs and then they, they give us some comfort that we should bring our proposals and all that. It is a good beginning but they, are, they, are, they have their limitation. Mm. The bulk of it is for government to engage us, understand what we actually mean, and they should trust it, much as we also want to trust government. When this trust come, I think Ghana will be the uh, beneficiary. Thank you very much, Dr. Joseph. Th Forbin. Thank you, my voice. He is the president of the Ghana Union of Traders Association in Guta. Now, let's stay within the business sector, because workers of Jaime Congregations, the company belonging to the deported Indian businessman Ashok Sebaram, have given government a one-week ultimatum to allow Mr. Sebram to return to Ghana or face their wrath. Mr. Sebram was on Sunday, March 11, arrested and deported by officers of the Ghana Immigration Service. It follows a Supreme Court ruling quashing a high court decision ordering the restoration of his residence and work permit. The court held that he should have petitioned the Interior Minister before rushing to court. He has since sent that petition, but even before a response comes from the minister, his workers are unhappy and are staging a protest. Joy News' Hano Dami joined the workers and filed this report. <laughs> So this is the second of such demonstrations by workers of Jaimai Communications. They are protesting the deportation of their employer Ashok. And you know, we all know that on Sunday he was deported back to India as a result of some issues he has with immigration service. I'll talk to Richard, who is the ad uh, deputy administrator, to tell us why they keep demonstrating. Now, Richard, this is the second of such demonstrations. Yeah. What exactly do you want? All we are seeking is that we need him back. Okay. That is that is our message. Okay. We need him back. Okay. It's as simple as that. Okay. So are you trying to say that without his presence you can work? Yes. It's just like a father in the house who is no more at home. We don't want to be single parented. Yeah. We need him back. How that is long, our message. How long are you going to continue to do this? Because right now he has some issues with immigration that he's dealing with. So till that solution is found, what will, will you continue to do this? Yeah, we will continue to do it till he comes. Won't you be working so that at least you generate revenue also? Yeah, that is what we want to tell the president. That yes, our demonstration is what? It's affecting our work. Because we are supposed to what? To do a job of which we are going to pay a tax of it. So if we are not working, there will not be any revenue to pay to him. What and then whilst all this tussle is being sorted, why don't you get back to work? At least you have done one demonstration so that that issue is sorted. Then you can also generate revenue. So when is he coming? When he comes, we will get more jobs. And that is what we want. So, so you're not going to work till he comes? We are not going to work till he comes. What happens to the company then? That is, yes, that means Ghana don't want investors. You have helped this demonstration twice. Who exactly are you directing? I've seen we, have, we have written a petition as the court directed, the Supreme Court directed, that the, we should what? They were giving him seven days to write a, a, a petition to the Interior Minister. So we submitted the petition to the Interior Minister, to the Labour, the Minister of Labour, and then the Ghana Immigration Service, as well as the President. And what response have you gotten so far? Apart from the, uh, the acknowledgement that we received, so now we've not received any... You haven't had any issue where you've been told that this day meet them for some kind of dialogue? Not yet. Okay, so right now you haven't heard from them and you are demonstrating. So what next will you do? Because right now he's not in the country and you say you're not going to work till he comes. Yes. Yeah, what our next action is that to match to the what? To the immigration service the through the interior minister. When is that going to be? They are giving them about seven days. Soon, very soon, as soon as possible. So, for how long have you not worked? <laughs> Since Monday. Since Monday. Yes. At the end of the month, you will expect some salary. Where is that going to come from? It's going to come from him. 
from him. He's and he's the only signatory we have to. Okay. That is our cry. He's the only signatory we have. How are we going to talk? But, but you have to work so that at least no, maybe he might even come no, before the end of the month so that he can sign some money for you. He can sign some money for us. Yeah. That is if. That is if he's here. So let's assume that definitely, that let's assume that everything is going to work out and by next week or next two weeks he's in. If you are not working and he comes, how is he going to get the money to pay you? He's going to get the money to pay us. How? Because that is, it's going to affect the company. Yeah. That is it. Because instead of us being productive... That's exactly what I'm saying. So are you okay for fitting your salary just to continue asking that government brings him back? Yes, because we want equal justice. So you don't mind if you forfeit your salary? For sure. Let's go to another group of workers who did not work this morning, but this time for just a few hours. You know, work came to a standstill from 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock Friday morning at the various ministries, departments and agencies here in Accra as workers laid down their tools and picked up their brooms to help clean the ministries. A statement from the Office of Head of Civil Service stated, it is a directive from the Chief of Staff as part of government's campaign to ensure that the President's vision to make Accra the cleanest city in West Africa, well, in Africa, I should say, is realized. Maxwell Agbagba was as the ministries and now reports. If you don't be part of this, if you don't participate in this cleanup exercise, then I, the one that you are hearing, I myself, I'll bring your query letter. You must be part of this cleanup exercise because it's the goal of the president that the city must be clean. It's the goal of the president that the city must be clean. We are currently here at the Ministry of Health. Um, this vehicle from the Information Services Department is reminding workers here um, at the ministries to come out between the hours of 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock to help clean uh, the ministries. Uh, and that's a directive from the office of the chief of staff, we are told. And already the workers here from the Ministry of Health are going about this duty. Yes, our ministry's role would be to create more awareness among the public about uh, how cleanliness relates to health. You know, there's a direct relationship between cleanliness and health. And so that is the more reason why we will have to play a very key and supportive role in this direction. Talking about uh, uh, reality, um, I think it will all depend on all of us. Okay. If we are determined to make it so, we will achieve. I believe strongly that, as we all say, that the wealth of a nation is the health of the people. We all know sanitation and health are major um, investment that we make in order to keep the health of the people alive or make the people healthy. So if you are tackling health through fan, uh, sanitation, I think it is a good idea. Many have described President Akufuado's vision of making Accra one of the cleanest cities in Africa as an ambitious target. They say it is not possible. All these workers on a normal day would be in their offices, but today they are outside here helping to make Accra one of the cleanest cities in Africa. I think it should be a conscious effort for all of us to get our environment very clean. Apart from our household, our places of work too should be very clean. And I think we should inculcate that attitude. You know, it's a change of attitude and minds. If we renew our minds and change our attitude, they should be a regular thing we should be doing. You know, apparently I've been, I've been working here, but this morning alone, the kind of felt and the dust that we have collected from there, from just around us, it, it has been awesome. It has been surprising. Not knowing we have all this felt around us and we have been living around it. It has been good enough. So if you have to repeat it every Friday gradually, it's going to go a long way to live up to that building that we want to be the cleanest city in Africa. We are now here at the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources where we've caught up with the Deputy Minister, Mr. Benito Ubusubio, also helping to clean a crowd. Uh, they say charity begins at home. So when from the presidency uh, to the sector ministries and all the executives get involved in a cleaning exercise, and if we are to do this often, then what it means is that we are showing a good example to the people and the people will also emulate and also copy and do the same. Interesting scene there. You're still watching 
Join us today with me, Daniel Daze. Story is going by so far. Ghana Union of Traders Association opposes increased cost of doing business in Ghana as they protest increases in port charges and they describe them as unbearable. Also, employees of Jaimai Constructions Communications, a company belonging to the ported Indian businessman Ashok Severam, gives government one week to return the employer to Ghana or they will march on the Immigration Service and Interior Ministries. And still to come, health experts warn against the continuous stay under the scorching sun as a way of preventing skin cancer and other eye-related problems. The details shortly after these important messages. Thanks for staying with us. Now, the National Health Insurance Authority in the Upper East Region is engaging stakeholders to discuss government's proposal to introduce health taxes as a way of raising mobilizing funds to uh, sustain the scheme. Earlier this year, NHI Chief Executive Dr. Samuel Yawano revealed plans by government to impose a health tax on products such as alcoholic beverages, cigarettes and sugar to achieve this target. Upper East correspondent Albert Sorry has more. One of the things we put forward is that government, you collect all the VAT. We thank you. You'll be giving out 2.5% into our little calabash there to look after our health. We plead in, can you increase it from 2.5% to 3.5%? The second thing we're asking government is what we call the health tax. The health tax. Because there are some of us whose activities make it more common for them to go to the Calabar to take money to look after themselves. This was NHIA Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Samuel Yao Ano, addressing labor groups in Bolgatanga in January this year. We are saying that if you want to smoke 10 packets a day, no problem. You can smoke 10 packets. But maybe let's put a little tax on that health activity of yours of smoking too much and we'll put it in the calabash so that when you start your cough, we'll take a little money from the calabash and we'll look after you free of charge. Some people also want to drink. They want to take maybe 10 bottles every day. We we'll say no problem. You can take 10 bottles every day, but let's just put a little tax on the alcohol and put it in the calabash so that if you fall sick because of taking 10 bottles every day, then we have a little money in the calabash to look after you. Now the world has come to realize that the sugar that we are consuming so much, it is the root cause of people putting on weight, getting overweight, getting obese, leading to sugar disease, and when they get sugar disease, then they get hypertension. And when you get these diseases, we have to look after you for the rest of your life. So when you are young, we are saying that if in one cup of tea, instead of putting a small amount of sugar, you want to put 10 cubes or 5 cubes of sugar in the tea, no problem. Put 5 or 10 cubes in your cup of tea, but let's put a little tax on the sugar so that when your diabetes comes, we we'll take money from the calabash, we we'll look after your diabetes. He said the taxes can only be introduced if government buys into the idea and goes through the required constitutional processes to make them legal. Following these discussions, the Upper East Regional Scheme of the NHIA has now started discussions with stakeholders in the various districts and municipalities as a way of getting the general public on board, taking their suggestions and concerns so that they can embrace the new strategic direction of the authority. Let's keep talking about our health because you may have noticed how much the sun scorches these days. Health experts warn continuous stay in sunlight has a negative effect on our health. Hannah Odame of our health desk has more in the following report. Out on an assignment and my shoes need change. My crew and I are close by the Tama station here in Accra, and so we move in there to find a replacement. 
Well, five minutes after negotiating with a trader, Papa Kwisi, I simply can't stand the heat of the sun. So I asked him how he manages to sell with the sun virtually in his face all day long. Uh, the sun is hot, but you have to sell because of you have two you have children in the house. If you don't sell, how you manage to eat with your family? Huh. Yeah, how about getting a kind of shade to cover you so that you don't feel the direct impact of the sun? Ah, uh, here is a station, so you can't get anything to cover you because very soon the car will move and different car will come. So if car is coming to move, you have to pull your this thing is you understand? Uh, so, so there in there out, you are under the sun. You are in the sun every day. Does it have any impact on you? Okay, me, I don't have any effect. Well, it appears he's not the only one. AC, who sells deodorant spray, says she's unable to sell as she used to because of the blistering heat. We are not ordering. Yes, I have to intimidate for money in the market. So I'm in market intimidate on copper part. So I'm intimidate fast on my cotton. And today I'm in Kujine Ingunum. I have to jump from Akakra. For Amina, the iced water seller, business must go on. However, so she resorts to medication when she falls ill due to the impact of the sun. This practice, according to Dr. Dennis Botte, is dangerous as the side effects is likely to lead to long-term health implications. At this point, they don't see the effect, but give them 20, 30 years. That is when you feel the effects of things that you have been exposed to decades ago. When the weather is so hot, I mean, you get onto the sun, the slightest thing you do, you are tired, especially for those whose work is outdoor. Yeah. After being exposed to so much of the sun, who have these rashes appearing on their skin and sometimes itchy, sometimes it's painful. Skin cancer and those things are long-term effects. In the shortest term is exhaustion, heat strokes, heat rashes, dehydration, which can lead to somebody feeling dizzy, but they can collapse out of excessive dehydration that they, they may experience because of the heat. For some commercial drivers, however, the heat is good for business. I'm having a condition actually in my car, but the AC will be on, but still the sun is scorching very hard. A lot of people have been taking a drop in just because of the weather. They don't want to stand on it for a second. How about those driving their own air-conditioned cars? Oh, I just dropped off from my car, so it's not like I'm going to walk too far from from where I'm, where I'm, where I'm buying my, my stuff in. Um, if you don't have an AC car, sometimes it's very uncomfortable. Because if you have business doing in town, it means that you need to have to find your way through the sand. My curiosity led me to speak to other people, and they shared with me the innovative ways they have come up with to deal with the impacts of the sun. I managed to pick my towel in case I'm sweating, then I clean up. And uh, once I'm sweating, I'm losing water, then I drink more water. It's very hot. By me, I use my glass to protect my eye. And you drink lots of water? Yes. How many have you taken so far today? Two. Two. I have my water bottle there. Okay. Seriously, when I was coming out, I, I never knew this was how the sun was going to be like. <laughs> and so that's why I did not bring an umbrella. If you... Be sure to carry a bottle of water with you if you're going to be walking under this scorching sun. But it's time for business now. Imano Abwajiriafi standing by. Thank you.